Hi, I'm John Lee, a senior consulting engineer in MathWorks Consulting Services. I work with customers on model verification and validation techniques and implementing model-based design to improve development processes and comply with certification standards. Software that runs mission or safety critical systems on modern automobiles, aircraft, and spacecraft is composed of millions of lines of code. Model-based design can help determine if a design is fully covered by a set of requirement-based test cases. A typical design process encompasses dividing requirements into smaller workable pieces, creating an implementation model, and in parallel, creating test cases and expected outputs. These test cases and expected outputs are used to verify the implementation behavior. There are a few issues with such a workflow. First, measuring completeness of manually created test cases with respect to requirements can be difficult, if not impossible. Second, model coverage results are collected based on the implementation model alone. Hence, it is very difficult to tell whether test cases have covered all the requirements. Finally, there isn't a way to verify the consistency of the requirement independent of implementation. We will demonstrate a requirement-based testing methodology that combines the use of a requirements model and automatic test generation. In the new workflow, the test creation process now starts with the creation of a requirements model. This step in itself allows us to validate the consistency of the requirement. The requirements model consists of two components. The requirement logic, which will be used to create the test inputs, is the reference model. That is what Simulate Design Verifier will use to automatically generate requirement-based test cases. The other component of the requirements model is the test oracle. Test oracle contains a logic that calculates the expected output, thus eliminates the need for manually creating expected outputs as a function of each individual test cases. So how does this work? First, we create a reference model. We then use Simulink Design Verifier to generate the test cases. Now, to create the expected output, we create a test oracle. All of these are then connected in parallel with implementation model in order to simulate the test and compare the outputs. Now, let's take a look at the final model implementation of the above workflow. We have modeled an autopilot algorithm based on a set of requirements. The model testing process starts with the creation of a requirements model, which consists of the reference model and test oracle. Requirement-based test vectors are automatically generated by using the reference model with Simulink Design Verifier. The resulting test cases from Simulink Design Verifier are located inside the Signal Builder block, and they will be used to verify the behavior of the implementation model. Note that the implementation model is connected in parallel with the requirements model, with the test cases being fed to both the requirements model and implementation model. An output comparison function is also added in order to compare the functional behavior or simulation output between the implementation and the requirements. Now, how do we build a requirements model? The answer is that we build up each requirement as individual flow logics. Let's take a look at the reference model, for example. The input signals are first divided into equivalent classes. The output of the equivalent classes is then analyzed using flow logic to determine which requirement is being activated. For example, each of the branching logic implements one of the requirements. As mentioned earlier, we use the reference model to generate test cases automatically using Simulink Design Verifier. It is important to note that this means that the test cases created are based on requirements or requirement flow logic. Hence, they can be traced back to each and every requirement. Similarly, the test oracle, which is used to calculate the algorithm output, is also built using flow logic. The modeling style is based on a technique called cause and effect graphing. What type of issues could we find with this method? In our example, we found that there is a requirement specified in such a way that a closed loop feedback control was implied. For this to happen, additional IOs were added in the implementation model and not on the requirements model. This also showed up from a coverage perspective, where we have 100% reference model for requirements coverage, but not 100% implementation model coverage. This means that we have missing requirements. When looking at the missing coverage, as expected, it points to the closed loop control subsystem. Finally, we analyze the discrepancy in the simulation results between the test oracle output and output from the implementation model. We found that one aspect of the design was not explicitly defined, and that is what will happen when the control inputs are not zero to start out with. In our example, the interpretation between the requirements and implementation are not the same, resulting in simulation differences between the two. In summary, building the requirements model allows us to independently verify the consistency of the requirements. From the requirements model, we automatically generate test cases, 
thus ensuring 100% coverage of the design through requirement-based testing.